Welcome uh, to the second lecture on the special meaning of relativity. And in the last lecture, we discussed some basics of the special theory of relativity. We discussed some uh, introduction to the special theory of relativity. And our final conclusion was that the special theory of relativity is means the speed of light that we are talking is actually with respect to no frame. It is irrespective of any frame. It is not a relative motion. It is a motion, it is a speed, but it is not with respect to anything. And that was the conclusive thing that we did. Actually, when we talk of something very, very small, then we use quantum mechanics. And when something is very, very fast, then we use the special theory of relativity, it means with respect to motion. And when something is very, very huge, then we use the general theory of relativity. So the regimes are like this. Now we will start from the very basics of the special theory of relativity or the theories of relativity. And the very first thing that we will discuss is space. And we know that motion is something which is relating both the space and time. So we say that motion is space over time. We wrote earlier that space is distance and time is the duration. So any theory that will relate the space and time, it will be the theory of space and time. So this is the theory of motion. Earlier we were having some theories of motion like in the 16th century it was from the Galileo Galilei, the 17th century from uh, Isaac Newton. Those theories were but they were only of the relative motion. They are with respect to something. And the motion that we discuss in special theory of relativity, it doesn't require any reference. So, we say that when the motion or when the speed means we define them in all the terms like motion, speed, and from here of speed we actually means velocity. That it is having the speed as well as the direction involved. Because we are considering some frames, those frames are inertial frames and we will discuss them today the what is meant by inertial frame of reference and the non-inertial frame of reference. So the we know that Galen and Galena in the 17th century and Isaac Newton and Isaac Newton in the 18th century formulated some laws of motion and those laws of motion were valid for all speeds but when it came to the speed of light c equals 3 10 or 8 meter per second then those laws became invalid and now we will have to search for some other laws and those laws are actually in the special theory of relativity. So the very first thing that I consider is the frames of reference. 
So the frames of reference, what is meant by the reference frame, we will discuss these things. As I told you, motion, motion is with respect to space and motion is with respect to time as well. Now when I consider time, then I need a clock which can give me every instant of that time. So I need for motion, I need t, which usually we measured in a second, and a clock is required for this. And when I come to space, then I will say that what is the location of a body. So the location of a body is will be always with respect to some reference. With respect to what the location of their body is, date. So when these two combine, then we will have the motion or the speed and this motion will also be relative. Like when space is relative, means when I want to locate something in space, that is to be located with respect to something. And that's something we call the origin, we call the reference point. And then when this thing is relative, then it means the motion is relative as well. If something is in motion, then it means with respect to what it is in motion. Like for example, I consider a space shuttle. And the space shuttle is in a space. And there is nothing in the background like there are no stars etc. Then how the space shuttle will be considered in motion? The space shuttle cannot be considered in motion because this motion is always relative and that is we call as means with respect to what we are saying about this thing that is called frame of reference because we are referring that frame that with respect to this thing is the location in space or with respect to that frame is the motion. So just going on further in this that when space is related motion is relative as well and let me discuss the uh, which can be called is Newton zero law because we know about the first, second and third law of motion usually we say zero law thermodynamics this is no, not a law but just a statement so we can refer it as this is the zero law in motion and what is the zero law is of motion. The zero law you can see that there, there is no absolute rest. There is no absolute rest. Like you cannot find a body which is absolutely at rest. Everybody is in motion, relative to each other. Whatever frame we consider, if the observer is in that frame, that observer consider that frame at rest. However, there is no absolute rest. So the uh, this is to be keep in mind that it is not a law but just a statement that there is no absolute rest. And what is the first law of motion? The first law of motion is Newton's first law of motion. What does the law say? The law says that in the absence in the absence of a external force, in the absence of a external force, a body can rest when he may at rest 
in a body in motion will remain will continue its motion in the absence of any external force whatever the agency of that force may be a body if it is at rest it will continue to be at rest or if it is in motion it will continue to be in motion we call the first law of motion is the law of inertia and from this we call is inertial frame of reference and non inertial frame of reference this seems a very simple statement like a body at rest will remain at rest and a body in motion will remain in motion but it wasn't that simple because human or the scientists took thousands of years in order to understand this thing that the first part is easy to understand this law was first discovered or put forward by Galileo Galilei in the 17th century and later on it was formulated by Isaac Newton as the first law of motion so it was understood means not the is it was understood or it was discovered by Galileo Galilei now the first part is not that difficult to understand that a body at rest will remain at rest in the absence of any external force but we see that when a body is in motion after some time it stops and the head of role of the friction is involved here so it obscures a little bit you can say the second part to understand it truly so we will see that if a body is in motion then what is the external force on it and if a body is at rest then what is the role of external forces on this so we can say that that the inertia is actually the resistance to the state of a particle like we say that if it is at rest then this body doesn't want to move unless you apply a force it will not move by itself and if it is in motion it will not stop unless you just exert a force and stop this body so there will be some agency there will be some force which will stop this and this is called the law of inertia now this is one thing that we should understand that the law of inertia it is not it is not weighted in our frames like the law of inertia is not weighted in every frame so we will now talk of this thing they why this is not weighted in all frames of reference we know they if uh, i consider the example of traveling traveling in a car no when i am applying the accelerator then with just the application of the accelerator i am just push back into the seat and when i apply the brakes to a moving car then i am moving forward so what is the force on my body which do this thing is there any force on my body it is not only the speed because in accelerating or decelerating means the braking i'm just changing the speed 
But the same thing happens when I make a turn. And in the turn, it is actually the velocity is changing. So acceleration is there. Now when I'm doing this thing inside the car, then are there any forces on my body? Mean is there a force on me that moves me forward or moves me backwards? No, there is no force at all. The force is on the frame itself. Because the frame in which I am moving, that frame is experiencing a kind of force, means the frictional force with the ground. So it is not on my body. Means in the absence, what we said in the law of inertia, in the absence of any force, a body at rest will be at rest. So I was at rest inside the car. Right? Means in that frame I was at rest. But when I applied brakes to the car, I just moved forward. But I say that there is no force on my body. The force is actually on the frame. So it means the law of inertia is not holding. Right? The law of inertia is not holding. There was no force and my wrist was disturbed. So it depends uh, on the situation, on the frame. That whether that frame is, the law is weighted there or not. So clearly the law of inertia is not holding in the car frame because the car frame itself is changing speed. Right? The car frame is experiencing that change. And that's why the law of inertia is not valid there. Now how, how we will uh, see this thing that where the law of inertia will hold. So the law of inertia will hold only when it is observed from a very when the motion is observed from a special frame, from a special frame of reference. If the motion is observed from a special frame of reference, then the law of inertia will hold. And that special frame of reference we call is inertia frame of reference. Like is the inertia, is the law of inertia is holding there. So that frame will be called is inertia frame of reference. In simple words, we call such a frame is acceleration is equal to zero there. Acceleration depends Acceleration is the rate of change of linear velocity. Velocity itself is the speed multiplied by the direction of it. So if this one changes or this one changes, it will change the velocity. Velocity changes, acceleration will change. So it means a uniform our constant velocity will be possessed by the inertial frame of reference. Got it?